So today I'm going to show you how our zero touch provisioning works with our Edgemark line of session border controllers. So what the zero touch provisioning server does, it allows you to drop ship the session border controllers directly to your customer prem, eliminating the need for you to get it delivered to your business, program it, and then ship it out to your customer. So once we get the MAC address from the distributor of the SPC that we want to utilize zero touch provisioning for, we need to go in and create a policy for it and enter in the MAC address. So on first boot up the SPC, we'll know what server to go to to download its config file. So we'll come in here and select add policy. We're just gonna name it ribbon test. And we're gonna come down to apply configuration. And here was where you could set up your LAN and WAN subnet settings to either make them static or DHCP. We're just gonna leave them at DHCP for now just for ease of the demonstration. You can come to security settings and set different parameters on how you want the firewall to behave, what traffic to let through, what traffic to block. You also have the admin service config settings where we can come in and set things like MOS scoring, how low do we want the MOS score to be before the SBC will report a bad call back to the Edgeview Service Control Center. Trusted host, this is where we would put in uh, our, our different IP addresses. You may have heard it called uh, access control lists if you live in the Cisco world. It's the same thing, just different nomenclature. Well, we're gonna go ahead and leave that blank for now. Next, we come in to set up our voice server settings. We'll come in and set up the SIP server name, the transport, whether you want it to be passed through, UDP, TCP, TLS, we'll select that. And then we'll come into the survivability settings. This is where we can enable the SIP keep alive, interpret error code 403 as a success. We can monitor, turn on monitor SIP messages, enable a phone expires override, and en enable SIP server redundancy. And then we'll click save changes. So now that we've done that, we need to go into uh, Edge View, uh, into the auto provisioning settings, and plug in the MAC address and tell it what policy we want it to download its config from. So we're gonna come to provisioning, and then auto provision devices. We are going to enter in the MAC address of the SBC, it's going to come up and say status verified. And then we're going to select the ribbon test policy that we created and hit auto provision. So now on first boot up, the SBC will boot up. It'll reach out to the zero touch provisioning server, download its config, and then your technician can get in and access the SBC. Now we're gonna factory reset the SBC by pressing the erase button three times. That's gonna cause the SPC to get restored back to the factory default settings and then download the config from the Edgeview Service Control Center. So now if we come into status under the provisioning settings, we'll see that we've actually made first contact with the SBC. It's actually in the process of downloading its configuration. And then when it's finished, this will actually disappear from the screen when you refresh the page. So on first boot up, the SBC will have its default passwords. Edgeview will change those default passwords to something random. So now we need to go in and change those passwords to something that we can remember. Go into the collection that we assigned, come to devices, and by default, the host name on the SPC is going to be the model number, which is a 2900E in this instance, and followed by the MAC address, and we can change that later. So now we come up and click on actions and change passwords. And we are going to set the different passwords. We have a root user for the command line, the GUI password for the web interface, and a read-only user. So we're gonna change all three of those passwords. And we will say change password for one device, and then we will say change password now. So we're just gonna refresh the page to confirm. Now I'm gonna show you where the configuration changes have been made inside of the SBC. So we're gonna come down to VoIP and then SIP, and we'll see that we have our SIP server settings have been changed from the default of all zeros to the, uh, the FQDN that we entered. Um, it's still on port 5060, it's still set to pass through, come down to survivability, and we'll be able to view our survivability settings that we put in and we can see the SIP server is up and, and connected. And that's it, now the Edgemark is set up.